2025 and mobile apps are still hotter than ever. 2025, for the first time ever, mobile app revenue is predicted to reach over $1 trillion. And if you have your next app idea, it's time to put it to work. Now, building an app can be quite difficult and quite a tedious process, especially if you don't know where you're starting. So here are seven steps for you to take before you build your next mobile app in 2025. Number one, first of all, before you even start building, make sure that you validate your idea. Validating your idea entails checking if this is something that is viable, checking that this is something that there's room for in the market, i.e. there's not too many competitors doing the exact same thing as you. So make sure that there's space for it or you can do it much better than the people who are out there doing it already. You can do this by browsing Reddit, you can speak to friends and family, you can check for the general consensus by by looking into Google Trends for searches similar to the app that you're trying to build, etc. But get an overview of how popular and how in demand an app like your idea would be. Without demand and without a validated idea, you can spend months building something that it turns out no one really wants anyway. Number two, determine if you even need to code. And if you want to build a mobile app, there are two routes. You can either go coding or you can go no coding. Obviously, if you want to go coding, you have to either learn yourself how to code or maybe you already know how to code or you have to hire someone who can code it for you. So if you want to hire someone, my recommendation is to hit up Upwork and check on Upwork if there are any good developers in maybe Eastern Europe where prices are relatively low but quality is very high. Or if you know how to code yourself, obviously just strap it down and get going. But there's also another option which is no code. No code is using a platform such as Flutterflow to produce an app without having to write a single line of code. So kind of like a drag and drop interface, you're able to build a mobile app from scratch and it can be quite a good way to one, validate your idea. So to get an early version of your app out there, or it can be a good way to get an app out there if you have no technical knowledge whatsoever. Number three, choose the right platform for you. Now, there are a couple of different ways to approach this. For example, if you want to build an Apple Watch app, or if you want to build a desktop app, or a mobile app, or a web app. Now, obviously, I'm focusing on mobile apps here, but say you're starting from a mobile app and later on you want to expand into a web app as well. So you want to have your core experience on your mobile app, but you want maybe a companion Apple Watch app or a companion web app, then you need to choose and plan accordingly. So if you're planning to build only an Apple iPhone app, maybe you can program in Swift, for example. If you're planning to build uh, an app that's gonna be used on the web, on your phone, on your Apple Watch, then you can choose an all platform coding tool such as Flutter or React Native so that you can create an app that's then gonna be distributable on all of the platforms that are relevant to you. I would recommend building your app in something like Flutter. Obviously, I'm a huge Flutter advocate, that's what I code in, but that allows you the flexibility. So if you only want to release an iPhone app, it's also possible to just do that in Flutter. But then if you come to a point later on where you also want to release an Android app or you also want to release a web app, it's going to be much easier to do this from Flutter than from any other platform, such as if you just go Kotlin or if you just go iOS. Number four, design the user experience. And what I mean by this is drawing out what the user experience inside of the app is going to be like. Don't ever free ball your app. Freeballing your app means that you just sit down to code or you sit down to build and you start from scratch. You design a login page, maybe then you come to a main page, oh, and then you navigate to here. And from the main page, you're able to navigate to there, but you end up with this confusing flow that's not really thought through and that just becomes messy. And this quickly leads to an unnavigatable app and it leads to an ugly app. So make sure that you sit down, you at the very least create a wireframe, which is the user journey throughout the app. Think through how everything's gonna work, how you're gonna move from this screen to that screen and back, and how information is gonna be passed along. Now, ideally, you would have a UI design as well. A UI design is just the general aesthetic of your app, so a very detailed Figma design, for instance, of what the buttons are gonna look like, what the kind of fonts you're gonna be using, what colors you're gonna be using, what buttons go where and what they do. So connecting that UI with the UX. Then you're gonna be able to use this when you're coding to base it on something so that you're not just freeballing with what you're doing so you can create the consistent UI and UX experience that is easy 
to understand for the end user. Number five, focus on core features. So it's quite easy to, when you're especially in the early stages of building an app, to get dragged into, oh, maybe we should have this feature, or we should have an AI feature dragged into here, or anything along those lines. If you want to build a core app, which is maybe a pillowcase monitor to check, check the temperature of your pillowcase, then make sure that this is the core feature and that all of the other nice add-ons such as the community part or such as the uh, purchasing of pillowcases part is something that comes later. Focus on developing the core features, focus on making this as good as possible because this is the problem that you are trying to solve. And all the other things quite easy, easily become distractions and they make the app unscalable and they make the app UI confusing. So make sure that you focus on the problem that you're trying to solve and solve this problem as well as you can. Number six, plan for scalability and integrations, but not too much. So you want to build an app that's gonna be scalable. And what I mean by this is that, for example, your database and the stuff that you use for your database has got to be relevant for what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to build a community app where a user is gonna be able to connect with users across the world, then obviously the storage type that you want to choose is gonna be very important. You don't wanna store all the information locally on your user's device, but you want to store it in Firestore Firebase or Amazon Web Services or another cloud-based database. So that in the future, it's gonna be much easier for you to share this data with other users. Think about any third-party services that you're using. So for example, Firestore Firebase, or maybe you're using some type of plugin to draw charts inside of your app or anything like that. And try to keep these to a minimum so that you don't have too many dependabilities. So if one of these things break or if they stop updating it or if they replace it, it's gonna be less work in making sure that this works with all of the other things inside of your app. But also do use this where you have to because it saves a lot of time and it allows you to create a very high quality app in a shorter period of time and in an easier way than having to build out all of these components and all of these things by yourself. And number seven, if you have not released an app that you're slightly embarrassed embarrassed about, then you have released too late. So try to get an MVP out there as soon as possible, because if you get an MVP out there, people are gonna be able to test it, people are gonna be able to give you feedback, and you are gonna be able to get a better idea on what you need to change for this app to be a commercial, larger scale success than it is currently. So, so get your app out there as soon as possible, sit down with some users, see how they interact with the app, uh, book some calls with users, pay some users to test your app even, and take it from there. Then after that, you can iterate, you can change, you can plan out a whole new development phase, or you can maybe even raise some money to hire developers or get some marketing funds for this particular app. But this all comes down to iterating and improving at the end of the day. So those are my seven general tips on how you should go about releasing an app in 2025. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of coding. There's a lot of planning. But make sure that you do all of these things. You can find all these things in my mobile app checklist that will be available down below. In this same link, you'll be able to find my free Notion template that also has a sprint planner built in where you're able to schedule all of this development. You're able to track all of the different phases that you're in. So for example, making sure that you know where you are in the UX design phase, you know where you are in the market research phase, etc. It's all available for free down below. You just input your email, let me know where I should send it, and I will gladly share this with you. But these are my tips as someone who has built and released several mobile apps on how to proceed building your mobile app in 2025. Feel free to subscribe. It's completely free of charge, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.